Hi folks, my name is Deepak Shukla and welcome to my Unacademy YouTube course, how to get a place at Oxford, Cambridge and other top European universities. If you're looking to prepare for examinations and take courses for any number of topics, head to unacademy.com, India's largest learning platform and stay tuned for this course to make sure that you get into the top university. Brought to you by Deepak Shukla and Unacademy. Hey guys, welcome back to part three of how to write a personal statement for Oxford, Cambridge and other European universities. So let's begin. Um, so in this, um, in this um, video, what you're going to learn ultimately is um, two specific areas broadly. We're going to be looking at university entry requirements for Oxbridge, uh, whether you're from the UK, US, the wider EU and also of course Indian students. Um, so we're going to have a look at what it is that Oxbridge require from you in order to go to the university um, at, a, at, a, at a kind of general level. And then looking further beyond that, we're also going to consider subject specific entry requirements because you're probably thinking in your head, right, that, um, you know, I want to apply uh, deep book for a specific subject. I want to apply for, for, for English. I want to apply for physics, economics, management or medicine. So the reason that I picked these um, subjects here is because I wanted to try and find a relatively wide degree of, of subjects to cater for people that are, you know, whether it's kind of the arts and social sciences a little bit, if you will, with English. Mathematics, of course, um, is a fundamental, very popular subject in India. Then you've got physics, uh, a science, economics and management uh, for those business students. You can't study kind of economics directly or business directly. It's not something that you can do at Oxbridge, um, as well as medicine um, for those who wish to become doctors. So we're going to be looking at those five subjects. So this is what we're going to be going through in today, or this video rather. Um, this video's um, points. <laughs> there you go. Okay, cool. So let's talk about um, the United Kingdom first of all. Um, now, a thing to say on this point is that this you don't have to be, of course, in the UK to be studying A-levels. A-levels um, are something that are particular to the kind of the UK academic system. And as you can see, for those who are applying to Oxbridge, um, you are given conditional offers depending upon a variety of factors to include um, you know, grades that range from ultimately two A stars and an A to triple A or three A stars, you know, depending upon the subject that you're applying for, it's competitive competitiveness and what's involved. Remember we said before in one of the previous videos that um, there are the 10 hardest subjects to get onto as well as the 10 easiest subjects to get onto. And if you look at, you know, the hardest to the easiest, you're going to see perhaps some level of disparity in terms of what they'll actually allow. Now on the application page itself, they all might be fairly standardized saying, you know, you need a triple A to apply, but it all depends, of course, upon um, how many places uh, there are, as well as how many applicants per places there are. So all of these things come into play. But as a general rule of thumb, you can assume, as you can see, if you study A-levels, whether you're going to an international school where A-levels are taken as part of the course, that it's going to be pretty straight shooting in terms of what you need to achieve. So if you're doing A-levels, aim for a triple A star aim for a triple A star or, or, or even better get four A stars um, or you know try and get as close to that as you possibly can so that's the first thing now this is where um, it gets a little bit more interesting um, for those of you who are not studying A-levels. So there's three main areas to kind of look at, okay? Um, that's the International Baccalaureate, that's the European Baccalaureate, and then you've got kind of the American education system, if you like. Um, so um, with all of these points in mind, here is, um, you know, what you need to think about. If you're studying the International Bac Baccalaureate, as it says here, you need kind of a score between 38 and 40, um, including your core points, depending upon the course that you're going to. Um, so again, you know, it needs to be as high as it possibly can. Um, for those who are doing, and IB is very popular in, in the EU, um, to a smaller degree, you also have the EB, or the European Baccalaureate, based upon, as you can see, the French system, Baccalaureate. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it, I could have got it wrong, but you need an average of 85% or above, which um, with scores of eight to nine in specified subjects. So depending upon where you are, where you're from in the world, 85% may seem like a lot or it may seem like a little. Certainly in terms of like the UK perspective, at um, a degree level, getting above, you know, 70%, depending upon the subject, is considered to be very, very good. Certainly in English literature, which I studied, and we're going to be coming on to the application process for English itself specifically later on. Um, but yes, with the EB, you have to score an average of 85% or above with scores of 8 to 9 in specified subjects. 
And then you've got the American education system. So the Americans, um, they, they redesigned the SATs, um, I think maybe a couple of years ago. And that means that, you know, some of the things have actually changed in terms of the application criteria, because depending upon whether you're a, a mature student, you're a graduate, or when you ultimately took your SATs, things have changed around a little bit now. We're only going to concern ourselves with those, um, you know, the scores for kind of today at the moment, which is students sitting, you know, the redesigned SAT will need to achieve a total score of 1,470 out of 1,600. So looking at all of these possible options, right, you've got, you know, the triple A or the triple A star at A level, you need a 38 out of 40 at a minimum, you need 85% or above as an average or you need, you know, 1470 out of 1600, which is probably around, you know, like 90, 90% anyway, um, you are expected to get top, top marks as part of your education. So do bear that in mind, whether you're studying the A level, the IB, the EB, or, you know, you're in the American education system, you're looking at SATs. So all of these things are just worth considering. Okay. So um, let's, um, actually go to to India before we come to the general application process um, so if you're applying from um, India then this is of course what you're most concerned with and uh, let's take some time to go through this so if you're in you know your year 12 qualification uh, that's what we've got here year 12 then um, or the year X and 2 um, you have studied with either the CBSE or the ISC examination, ISC examination boards, and you got an achievement again of ninety percent in each of your five subjects that are studied. Now, if you're, you're if you're if you're from India and you're watching this, you know I don't pretend to know more specifically about these qualifications than you do. I'm sure you'd be very familiar with them um, if you're looking at applying to Oxbridge um, and you're looking at the qualifications that you've got. So whether you're doing CBSE or ISC, you need to be ultimately scoring ninety percent above in each of the five subjects. So you you know you that uh, each of the five subjects that you study. Okay, so again, top, top marks. For those of you that wish to study the sciences, whether you want to do, you know, physics, uh, uh, biology or chemistry, uh, or, you know, mathematics, for example, I presume also, then they all, you also might be required to take the IIT, Indian Institute of Technology Entrance Examination, as a precondition for entry. So there may be some more work involved there to bring you up with perhaps, you know, a standardized form of qualification that is ultimately respected worldwide. So for all of you from, from, from India that are watching and are considering an application, this is probably the most important slide in respect of, you know, the qualification criteria that you need to go on and, you know, ultimately keep applying to Oxbridge. So let's go through and look at the next step, which is, you know, your general application process. And um, these are some of the kind of points just to, just to be aware of ultimately. You really, um, so, so, well, each each course has, well, I say each course, but many of the courses have relevant aptitude tests. So you'll have tests that are kind of area or subject specific, depending upon what you're applying for, uh, to test your general knowledge. Now, you've got obviously all your external qualifications that you bring into the kind of application for or process. But what Oxbridge want to do is also what they do do is have some standardized form of internal testing that they use to measure you against another student who on paper might look ultimately exactly the same. So these are key tests that you really should um, be preparing for. And we'll go through them um, in, in just a little bit. But 15th of October, right, and the ultimately mid-January is the kind of key and critical period when it comes to Oxbridge that all of the decisions are made, okay? So by the 15th of October, you really should be submitting your UCAS application because things, you know, start getting busy. So from August, as a general rule, August this year, if you're applying for like the 2018 intake, then um, August this year is when you should start really thinking about actually beginning to write your application, beginning to prayer all the parts of your application. You should, if you're thinking about it, already be researching and preparing you know it now just have it have it kind of top of mind so that you know that come august you have everything ready in terms of the things that you've achieved and the things that you've done to make sure that by the 15th of october you can submit your application to ucas and depending upon how that goes then you will get a date to take the relevant aptitude test 
If you pass those two initial parts, then you go on to actually visiting Oxbridge for a, an interview. And this happens to candidates that, you know, get past the first cull. The first cull is, you know, a brutal one because many candidates who on paper believe that they do have all of the qualities of becoming of an Oxbridge man or Oxbridge person don't make the shortlist. And shortlist candidates get through to interview in December. And then from there, by mid-January, generally speaking, you'll know whether you're going to get a place at uh, Oxford or Cambridge. So this is the kind of general application route from the 15th of October all the way through to the 15th of January. So we're looking at four months, basically. November, December, January. Sorry, I apologise. Three months, even. We're looking at a three-month span. And, you know, you want to make sure that you nail all elements of the application process then. So... We already passed this one. So now we're going to have a look at um, the actual individual subjects, as you can see. So um, let's start. Let's start with English literature. This applies ultimately, broadly speaking, to um, any other kind of more social sciences. Although English is quite particular in that there's more testing involved than there is in many of the other subjects. Why? Because you need to take the ELAT. You need to submit one example of writing and you need to, you'll be given kind of a test within the interview where you'll be given a piece of literature or a piece of text supplied before or during the interview and then you'll be expected to speak about it within the interview and you'll be questioned and pushed. So let's go through all of these kind of, kind of let's go through literature's constituent parts to, you know, just understand what it is that's involved in taking the ELAT. So let's get... So I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and I'll be supplying with I'll I'll be supplying you with all of these spreadsheets. So you can go ahead. Um, sorry, rather all of these presentations, these PDFs. So you can have a look, you know, look at them in your own time. So here we go. The English Literature Admissions Test is a pre-interview admission test for English co uh, courses at the University of Oxford as well as Cambridge. Now, what it involves ultimately is a 90-minute test, which tests reading skills, ability to shape and articulate an informed response to unfam unfamiliar literary material. So you're going to be giving some, given something that you've never kind of seen before, can't really prepare for as such, uh, but you will be comparing two or three passages and focusing on these specific elements. Language, imagery, illusion, syntax, form and structure. You get six poems to choose from, or six poems or passages from drama and or prose, so ultimately fiction or non-fiction, and this is the task. If we just go ahead and read it out together, select two or three passages, A to F, and compare and contrast them in any ways that seem interesting to you, paying particular attention to distinctive features of structure, language, and style. In your introduction, indicate briefly what you intend to explore or illustrate through close, close reading of your chosen passages. So, this is the ELAT. And all of the subjects I think that we're about to go through, maybe with the exception of uh, medicine, perhaps, have a basic admissions test that you need to be aware of. And this is what's entailed with the actual English element of it. So if we go back and have a look again, submit one example of, of writing. Uh, so this is, and if we go ahead and have a look, you know, see what it is. That, oh, this is going through to the ELAT again. I believe it probably is just this link here. And no, this has turned into an email. It's fantastic. Not not a problem. I'll go ahead and Google it. So English Literature of Requirements Oxford uh, here. I just want to bring up the actual course page so I can take you through word for word what it is that they actually uh, require from you. Just one second. And here we go. We'll go to how to apply. Here we go, one example of writing by 2016, and this should be a marked essay produced in the normal course of your school or college work and should not have been rewritten after marking. Preferably, it should be an analytical discussion of topical topics in the field of English literature through an English language topic, though an English language topic is permissible. It should not be a short-timed essay, a, uh, should not be a short-timed essay, a critical commentary on particular passages of text, piece of creative writing. So there you go, you need ultimately a piece of schoolwork which is going to be an essay that you've done on a particular subject within English. So furthermore, they give you suggested reading on these sites, selected criteria, what tutors are looking for, and all of these other elements. You get it here in about, requirements, fees and funding, how to apply, examples of some student profiles. Um, that's a couple here, as you can see. And I do recommend going through all of the literature that's available on online because it really will supplement and aid your preparations for the Oxbridge test. So let's keep going. So that's for English literature. 
you have something kind of similar for mathematics, although there are some further elements. So you've got the MAT, for those of you that are wishing to study mathematics. And as you can imagine, it's a mathematics admissions test. So you're studying maths, and what it is ultimately is a paper-based test, two and a half hours, subject-specific, for applicants of university degree, undergraduate courses in mathematics, computer science, and their joint degree. So for those of you studying maths as well as computer science, this is the test that you do need to know about. It's a mathematics admissions test. And what it is a test for is, um, it should say, uh, should tell us here, courses requiring MAT, MAT information materials, Hey guys, I paused for a minute because I realised I was making the funniest face uh, whilst I was looking. And I did find actually the, the link that I was looking for, which was just here on the left hand side, Matt Informational Materials, MAT Leaflet 2016. And here it tells us, um, it will take you through here. Where do I take it? How much does the test cost? You don't pay for a fee for it. And what's in the test? Here we go, 2 hours 30 minutes and it includes... Well, it doesn't really give you specifics so much, but it says it's a two and a half hour test. Test your mathematical ability and test your aptitude for computer science where necessary. Make sure you read the text questions carefully and it will test um, the depth of your mathematical understanding. So um, including those without further mathematics A-level or from other educational systems. It's a form of standardized testing again. And in line with that, um, what you'll see is um, Let's go to here. Oxford also recommend AEA and STEP papers. Now, you might not be familiar with them for those who um, don't study, of course, um, A-levels, because you can see a sixth term examination paper developed in Cambridge to provide applicants with an opportunity to great, demonstrate a greater depth of understanding that is required for A-level maths. So that's based upon the A-level maths system, okay, which is the STEP, which is why they talk about this is directly from the kind of Oxbridge site. Step papers are not part part of our entry requirements. They are recommended. So read that as, you know, you really should head out and make sure that you get that done. So for those of you who are outside of the course of the A-level system rather than the UK system as such, you look at the Advanced Extension Awards, which basically were introduced by the government. Advanced Extension Awards show that you have a particular proficiency in a subject that will allow you then to um, demonstrate that and will supplement and support any application that you make. So if we go over to courses here, this does bring us up to the mathematics page. And again, it's got a similar thing, you know, about regarding how to apply to student profiles. Go ahead and look at all of them and um, it'll tell you what to expect from the course as well as the careers you can get and so on and so forth. An example of a typical weekly timetable. And that is ultimately the bulk of what you need to worry about with mathematics. So we're going to kind of speed through now because I think you're getting the idea of what I'm going to go through, um, which is economics and management. You must take the thinking skills assessment this is now. And this is for a range of subjects, I believe. There you go, economics and management, experimental psychology, so on and so forth. PPE is incredibly popular um, it, at Oxbridge. I think it's one of the most competitive. And as you can see, it's a pen and paper test. There's two sections, the thinking skills assessment and the writing task. And this goes through 50 multiple choice questions, 90 minutes for that part, and then you have 30 minutes, so it's all together a two hour test. And this is um, one essay from a choice of four. So these are the things to expect from applying to economics and management, which is one of the most competitive courses at Oxbridge, I believe. And it goes on actually to make some recommendations of what you should be familiar with in terms of text. So um, reading The Economist or The Economist, you know, reading basically The Economist or the economics page of newspapers is highly recommended. Paul Krugman's rec rec uh, writings are recommended as well as Begg, Fisher and Dornbusch Economics. These are all of the introductory textbooks studied widely, widely used at Oxford. And as far as you are inclined, I would recommend, you know, doing some background and or wider reading around economics and management, the syllabus, the modules. So when it comes to, you know, if you get through to interview, you can make those all important leaps as well as, of course, within your personal statement to make sure that you come across as an excellent candidate. So physics, um, you yeah, must take, sorry, rather medicine, you take the BMAT instead. As you can see, let's get the BMAT, the biomedical, the biomedical admissions test, which is Again, probably for, um, let's have a look about BMAT. 
a two hour pen and paper test with three sections, 35 multiple choice questions and generic skills, which is problem solving, understanding arguments, data analysis and inference. Then you've got um, a 27 multiple choice question section, uh, and then you've got a writing task, which is going to be a short essay. So you've got two multiple choice, 60 minutes and 30 minutes, and then you've got a 30 minute essay. And that's basically how it is line, lined up. And if we go to um, here, I mean, this is um, Cambridge, use it, as well as Oxford, use it. And they use it for medicine, veterinary medicine, and you know, in the case of Oxford, they also use it for biomedical sciences. So um, if you're studying any of those subjects between those um, universities, Oxbridge we're most concerned with, then the thinking, sorry, the biomedical admissions test is something that you really should be on your radar in terms, again, of preparation. And if we go on and have a look at it, um, you know, with medicine, it says that medicine, it direct, you know, this is directly taken from the Oxford site, people. So, you know, make sure that you're really prepared when it comes to applying to such universities, because it says that competition is particularly strong and only 425 applicants are shortlisted for interview from the no doubt tens of thousands that apply. So that's 425 applicants from the tens of thousands that apply. And you're, you know, you go through on the basis of your BMAP, your GCSEs, if you've got GCSEs and other info on your application and you do absolutely get interviewed for this and um, anyone who's shortlisted will be expected to come to Oxford and interview in December, meaning that whether you're from India, Timbuktu, Taiwan, Timbuktu, Taiwan, Thailand or wherever it might be, you're expected to get to Oxford for interview in December if you want to study medicine because, you know, Oxford, of course, is a world-class university. So do bear all of this in mind. If we go over and have a look at the course link again, um, have, do bear this in mind at applying to such a university because it's really, really important that you're well-researched and you understand all of the factors involved in applying for you know a, a course or practicing medicine at at Oxbridge. So physics is generally um, you know more standard. You've got the the what you've got the PAT. I say more standard. It's not really to be honest. You've got the physics aptitude test, which is slightly different again, um, and it says that for the PAT test test syllabus and go ahead and look at you know the University of Oxford Department of Physics website, which I do recommend of course that you do. And you can go ahead and look at PAT past papers, and it will allow you to download once. Go ahead and download it together. I'm not, I'm not a physicist, so you know I won't be able to add any actual subject level insights here. But it's just good for you to be able to have a look at, you know, what is it that's involved in here? It's a blank page. You've got two hour test, as we can see. There's two parts, A and B, carrying equal weight. Part A, mathematics for physics. Part B is pure physics. And in terms of the types of questions, you've got here problem solving here. You've got some shapes here. You've got you've got basically a bunch of stuff, and there are resources ultimately that can help you get to where you need to go directly on the Department of Physics site on uh, for Oxford, as well as no doubt Cambridge as well. So, general UCAS application criteria applies. So, general UCAS application criteria um, is. Mm, actually, ironic. Well, it will be the qualifications that are required, whether from the United Kingdom from the IBEB, American Education System, or, or from India or otherwise. Um, and then it's just as it says, um, let's go back up. Physics, general UCAS application criteria applies. We're gonna go through specific criteria in the next uh, session, but that'll be like 4,000 characters or 47 lines, as well as going through the actual application process entirely itself. So that's physics. So guys, um, that is ultimately all the things that we covered in today's lesson. We looked at the university entry requirements for Oxbridge, whether it's IBEB A level or you know um, American SATs and then we look at subject specific entry requirements for English, mathematics, physics, economics, management, medicine, and actually a couple more places as well. So in the next lesson, we're going to actually now get to the part where we're dealing directly with the UCAS form application itself so we can get to the process of actually writing and making sure you nail a personal statement. So I'll see you in the next lesson.